and welcome to another episode of Physics Chat. Physics Chat is a show where we talk to real life physicists and ask them what it's like to be a modern day scientist. I'm back with my lovely co-hosts Fox and Joe. On today's show we have our first particle physicist, Amir. How are you doing? I'm pretty good. Um, the weather in Geneva is pretty wet right now, but other than that, my time in Geneva has been quite lovely, actually. Amazing. Amir is a second year PhD student at the University of Warwick and has just moved to Geneva to work on CERN. So how is Geneva? Geneva is amazing. The, the countryside is amazing. I have a view out of my flat that goes directly into the mountains. And anytime the weather is good, I can just see the snow up there. So it's been very nice. Oh, wow. That sounds absolutely stunning. Beautiful scenery. So please, can you tell us how you actually ended up at CERN? Sure. Um, so that actually all started back in the good old times of 2017, when I started my undergraduate and master's degree at the University of Birmingham in physics with Susie. So I'm pretty sure Susie can tell you all about the shenanigans that happened during our time at Birmingham. But anyway, so during that time between my undergrad and master's degree, I've actually been doing a lot of particle physics. So my degree has been very much particle physics based. So for example, in my third year, my fourth year, I've been working on experiments at CERN, trying to improve bits and pieces of the experiment here and there. And I also managed to snag in an SDFC internship between my third and fourth year to work on yet another CERN experiment. So because of that, and also because how much I thoroughly enjoy doing particle physics research, I basically decided to continue to do a PhD. As fate was have it, I got a position at the University of Warwick. But the interesting thing about doing a particle physics PhD in the UK is that there's this neat little thing called a long-term attachment, which we call LTA for short, where PhD students basically get shipped off into CERN <laughs> in Geneva for basically a year to do cool science here. So uh, you mentioned CERN. So for the uninitiated, what is CERN? Sure. So what CERN basically is, it's basically the European Organization of Nuclear Research, and it's the research center dedicated to studying nuclear and particle physics. It is basically the world's largest physics, particle physics laboratory in the world, and it is home to the Large Hadron Collider. And I'm pretty sure some of you might know the Large Hadron Collider as being the thing that managed to discover the Higgs boson back in 2012, which led to the 2013 Nobel Prize. What the Large Hadron Collider basically is, is a 27 kilometer long ring that has protons rising about at nearly the speed of light. And what we do with those protons is we smash them into each other and basically see what comes out of it. The nice thing about the Large Hadron Collider is that as a 27 kilometer long ring underground, it's actually large enough that the machine is actually between countries. So for example, my office is currently in Mehran in Geneva in Switzerland. And my experiment is actually that way, which is a 10 minute cycle into France. So mm -hmm. my experiment is in France when I mainly live and work in Geneva. Speaking of the experiments, there's actually four main large experiments at CERN that make use of the collisions at the LEC. I in particular work at one of the experiments, which is called the, the LHCB. So I am working at the LETB experiment as well as a part of the LETB collaboration. Nice. So you mentioned there about like um, discovering the Higgs boson. And I think the, what I often hear particle physics saying is about the standard model, which I think that's yes. part of. Could you just explain what the standard model means for us? Sure, yes. But before I describe what the standard model is, it might be just going, it might be worth going into a slight detour to basically tell you what particle physics actually mm -hmm. is all about. So particle physics, in my opinion, is best described as the study of the stuff that makes our universe. So basically, you know how like how back in chemistry, you learned that the atom was the basic units of the universe. And then you find out that actually the atom is made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Well, actually, the protons and neutrons themselves are made of even smaller things, which we call quarks. And those are what we call particles. And those are what we believe at the moment is to be the fundamental building blocks of the universe. So what particle physics does is we want to study those fundamental building blocks of, we, of our universe and try to understand how the universe basically works. So if particle physics is the study of that stuff, what is the standard model? Well, the standard model really is the theory that describes the stuff that we are studying. It's basically telling us what the universe is made of, but also how it interacts with each other. 
what I like to think about is that the standard model has three main parts that I like to think about it. For example, uh, one part of the standard model describes matter or the stuff that the universe is made of. And that is that includes the quarks that I've just previously described. Another part of the standard model is the forces bit that describes how the forces work. For example, that describes the electromagnetic force and the strong and the weak force, which is not that well known outside particle physics, which I won't delve into. But there are basically three of the forces that are currently described by the standard model. Finally, in the standard model, there's this math part that basically describes how the forces and the particles all interact with one another. And this is mainly described using a more advanced form of quantum mechanics, which we call quantum field theory, which really is just a big pain to describe. So I'm not <laughs> going to delve into any further on what quantum field theory actually is. Yeah, one of those um, scary words that I hear come up every now and again. And I just kind of go, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, leave, I'll let someone else deal with that. I'm happy with what I'm doing. So yeah. the standard model sounds quite good, the way you've described it, um, mm -hmm. and well determines how our universe works. Are there any problems with it that you haven't told us about? Yes. So this is basically what particle physics is all about at a current moment. And that is with the problems that we have with the standard model, which I think um, is best described in a twofold way, really. One, we know that the standard model is incomplete because when I was briefly describing what the standard model is before, you might have noticed that I suspiciously left out gravity in the description of the forces of the standard model. This is because gravity is actually not described in a standard model, and gravity being one of the four fundamental forces of the universe is quite a big deal to leave out in the standard model. So we do know that the standard model is incomplete. Two, the standard model is, even at its current state of incompleteness, is annoyingly good at describing reality. What I mean by this is, for example, the standard model as a theory managed to predict some property of the electron, which um, is called the electron magnetic moment, which is just a property of the electron. But that prediction is accurate to about 12 to 13 digits long. And the experimental result that tried to measure this showed a perfect match between both the theory and what we measure to the current experimental limit of 11 digits. So the standard model at its current state, which we know is incomplete, it's still annoyingly good that it allows us to predict a property up to 12 to 13 digits with perfect accuracy. Okay. And so what does what is it that CERN's doing that's trying to solve that problem? CERN, what is CERN doing to do right now is basically do what scientists do best, which is to experiment. So that is what we have the Large Hadron Collider for. That ring is colliding multiple protons multiple times. And what that's doing is it's basically generating a large amount of data and characterizing and seeing what events actually happen in the quantum level. So when we have all this data that we see at the quantum level, we can, as scientists, start to actually investigate and start to see what's going on down there and try to better understand what's going on and if there's anything interesting. So for example, if we in a subset of events, we do see something that doesn't look right, then that would be very exciting for us because that means that's interesting and that is possibly new physics. So that is what we're trying to do to solve this problem. Nice. No, so it's kind of looking, keep doing the experiments and see what it is that comes out weird and then try yes. and work back and work out why that's happening. Exactly. Okay, thanks. Great. So you've told us about the entirety of the standard model. So briefly, what specifically are you actually researching? So in one sentence, what I'm trying to do is measure the mass of the W and Z boson. Okay, so what is a W and Z boson to start with? And then how <laughs> do you measure measure their mass? What the W and Z boson is, it's really just force carriers of the weak force. And the weak force is basically one of the nuclear forces responsible for radioactive decay. But that's not really important. The important thing is that the W and Z bosons are just particles that are well described by the standard model and we can try to measure its mass and see if the mass that we measure is different than the mass that is predicted by the standard model. So the way we're trying to measure this mass is basically by smashing a couple of protons together to produce both W and Z bosons. And the W and Z bosons will decay into their decay products. And what we can do is, if we manage to see all the decay products, we can actually reconstruct the event and try to measure properties of the Z boson. The way I like to describe this to 
my friends is imagine two cars colliding and all you see is just the debris laying about in the field. If you are able to look at all the bits and pieces of the result, for example, you can see that the steering wheel of one car is this way while the wheel is that way. If you know enough about the debris, you can actually reconstruct what's happening and try to figure out how fast the two cars were going, how heavy the two cars were, and stuff like that. That is basically what we're trying to do, but with the WNZ bosons at the quantum level. So could you tell us a bit more of what's going on in your background? It's not our normal blurred background as we are normal show. Yes, I have the privilege of being the first ever, I think, interviewee that has a non-blurred background. So yeah, if I move out of the way a bit, this is actually the Large Hadron Collider. So this is the pipe or the tunnel that is about 90 meters underground circling Geneva and a bit of France. And this is what the protons are whizzing through. So you get a proton going one way and a proton going the other way, and they're constantly being accelerated to go around the ring. And at those specific points where the experiment actually are, those two beams of protons will actually be told to collide. Yeah. That is so cool. Do you know how many people it took <laughs> to build that? I don't know the exact number, but a lot. Um, yeah. I mean, just to say the LHCB collaboration I'm, I'm in has about 1,100 members inside, and that is considered a medium-sized experiment. Okay, so now it's time for my random question. I know you very well, Mir, and I know you're very good at scuba diving. So could you tell me where would be your dream place to scuba dive? That's a trick question because I am an Indonesian. I come from Indonesia where it has a lot of seas. So naturally, my dream location would be just to go back home and scuba dive more there because there's so much left to discover, a lot of fishies to see, a lot of turtles to see and other stuff amazing and what is your favorite sea creature you've ever seen that's a good question um i've seen a couple of sea creatures that i think are quite exotic there is one little shrimp i think it's called the mantis shrimp which is rainbow colored that i may or may not have actually seen underwater i couldn't properly identify it down there but it looked like a mantis shrimp so i think it is a mantis shrimp and the, way, and the reason I want to bring up the mantis shrimp is because the way they hunt their prey is by basically punching them <laughs> with their claws. And from what I remember correctly, I am no expert on this, by the way, but the punch of a mantis shrimp is fast enough that it actually creates a vacuum underwater that when the vacuum bubble collapse creates light. Mm. It sounds cool. I don't know how accurate that is, but that is one of the things that I know about the mantis shrimp that I've seen. That is amazing. Don't worry, we will fact check you. Fact check you. <laughs> As you should. Uh, anyway, Joe and Fox, what are your favourite sea creatures? Well, when I was younger, um, I always loved dolphins. Um, and therefore, other mammals like whales and sharks would come under that. Uh, but I think probably anything from the deep sea, so like anglerfish with their little light bulb or blobfish or anything with bioluminescence, all the weird squid stuff. They're really cool. Yeah, they are very cool. I agree. Those are really cool. I would love to go inside a submarine and go down there, but I doubt that'll happen. I'll be honest, I'm not... Like, the sea's kind of cool, but the things in the sea kind of freak me out a little bit. <laughs> okay. um, it's when you see octopuses just, like, really get me a bit. So I'm not going to say them. Um, but mm. whales are cool, because whales are just quite chill. Um, and they're just very, very cool. A lot of them are old and just wander about and eat something so small. So. What about blue sharks? Oh, no, absolutely, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Susie? Have you seen anything interesting underwater? Yes, I had the privilege of going scuba diving, ironically with a mirror. Um, <laughs> and um, I was able to see a sea turtle under the water, which was amazing. Thoroughly enjoyed it. So yeah, definitely sea turtles are now my favourite animal. They are adorable. They are adorable. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It was so interesting hearing about particles, the standard model, and what's going on in CERN. Let us know in the comments section what your favourite sea creature is. I can see the shark is around mm -hmm. and we would love to hear from you. 
Anyway, from everyone at Field of You, we hope you have an amazing day and goodbye. Bye. 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 <laughs> we smash them into each other and basically see what comes out of it. Wow. wow. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> see, Amir can do your job, no problem. It's got it down. Wow, this has been amazing. Thank you for coming, Susie. <laughs> You are actually like he's watched all our videos. That's, that's going that. in the outtakes. <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> Wait, what's this script? Wow, thank you so much for coming to the show. It was so interesting hearing about particles and stirred. Let us know in the comments section what your favorite sea creature actually is, and we would love to hear from you. Anyway, from everyone from Field of View, we hope you have an amazing day. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I was trying so hard not to laugh. Oh my gosh. <laughs>